Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at the installation and the setup of the TST tire monitoring system. This system is the full color system that comes with four flow through sensors and I've also got four of the cap style sensors that I'm going to install on my truck. It will compare the readings of those cap sensors to the readings of the internal sensors that are built into my truck already. My name's Jason from Weekend RV Adventures. On this channel I talk about camping tips ranging from product reviews, how-to videos, and even some of my favorite camping recipes. So if you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. Now before we open up these boxes and take a look at what came in the kit, I want to thank TST. They reached out to me and asked if I'd like to review their product, and I told them I'd be happy to do it, but I was going to give them a fair and honest review. So without any more talking, let's go ahead and get started on the review. We'll start off with the easy one. This is a tire pressure sensor tow car pack. This includes four cap sensors. Let's open it up. So we have four of the cap style sensors and an installation tool, some O-rings and uh, some little safety screws here, and a second installation tool. I'm outside and I don't want these to blow away, so I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the package for right now. The instructions here just give you a little information on the sensors, uh, some of the specs. They do include a user replaceable battery, which is one feature I would definitely look for in any tire pressure monitoring system. Now, let's take a look at the main system. This is the TST-507-FT-4C with repeater included. This is their, one of TST's newest systems with a full color monitor. It says it can display and monitor up to four trailers and ranges from 0 to 218 pounds of pressure. Again, uh, we have the color monitor, four flow-through style sensors in this system, a repeater and a suction cup mount. So let's open it up and take a look inside. Okay. Here is the color monitor. And uh, it's got a little sticker on it here. Just uh, kind of showing you what the display will look like once it's powered up little clip on the back looks like to mount the bracket uh, an on off switch a USB port uh, there's some other connectors here on the bottom and it looks like nothing on this side on the front we have a go a set and a back button and then a plus and a minus here is one of the flow through sensors you have a valve stem cap on this end and then this side will screw onto the valve stem on your truck or on your camper's tires and there's a little set screw here to lock it in place so we've got four of those underneath we have the windshield suction cup mount looks like it'll uh, spin left to right and up and down there's a quick release for the suction cup and some little screws to tighten up the, the other two movements. We have the repeater. Uh, this says the repeater is used to strengthen and amplify the sensor signal. Uh, the repeater is packaged with a system. It needs to wire the repeater to a 12 volt source that will be constant while driving. Uh, so this is not battery powered. This has to be wired in to your battery uh, and it says for best results mount the battery box closest to the wheels and avoid placing behind mirrors uh, it looks like it also comes with a couple of mounting screws for that repeater we have a USB uh, cigarette lighter adapter a USB cable and some more uh, o-rings and set screws and some wrenches for the sensors and lastly, a little uh, rubber 
holder. It looks like this will probably just let you set the monitor up on the dash if you wanted to set it that way instead of using the suction cup mount. Uh, I'm not sure how well this would stay in place, but I may try that out. We also have the instruction manual. Uh, seems to be fairly detailed. Some sensors for identifying your tire, uh, which tires are which. And a quick installation guide. So, if you give me a minute to go over this manual, figure out what the next step is, we'll get back. Okay, I've got the stickers on the cap sensors. Now, I'm going to apply the stickers to these flow-through sensors. And I'm just going to use T1 through T4 to indicate my trailer tires. One thing that uh, is recommended is when you're applying these stickers, before you just go and leave them on there, is to uh, take a coat of clear nail polish and just brush over top of this sensor with the clear nail polish. And that'll help that sticker to stay on, not come off in the rain or snow or whatever bad weather you're driving in. So there's T3. And for the last one here, T4. So all four stickers have been labeled. Now, I'm going to go ahead, pull the monitor over here, take off the protective cover. And we'll take a look at see if it powers up. Yeah. It did power up, but it is awfully hard to see out here in the bright sunlight. So I think we're going to move inside. I've moved inside where it'll be easier to see the monitor. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, it's powered up and uh, you can see it's displaying uh, PSI over here, degrees Fahrenheit, and the battery level when it first powers on. Now the first step will be to go ahead and program our tire sensors. I have the cap sensors here. I'm going to program these for the truck. So let's go ahead and get started on those. We'll press and hold the set button. Okay, and now we're into the settings menu. It starts on high pressure set. We're just going to scroll through until we get to Learn ID by pressing the plus button. When we get to Learn ID, we're going to press the set button again. And you can see it's showing all the possible tire positions and reading FFF, FFF is the code. We're going to start with this front right tire position, so I'm going to go ahead and select that by pressing set again. And you can see the code is now flashing. Now, we're just going to hold sensor number one up close to the monitor. Move these other ones away so it doesn't get confused. And press the go button. And there you go. It's displaying the code. Uh, it says if there's a double beep, we should try it again. So since we had our two beeps there, let's go ahead and try hitting go again. Well, maybe I've still got the other sensors too close. Let's move them away a little further. Okay, they're all the way on the other side of the table now. So hopefully we press go this time. Well, I'm not sure if that's working or not, but I'm going to go ahead and try the next ones. We'll press set to accept it. And then we'll scroll to the next tire. So my next tire will be the front left tire, and that will be number two. We'll press set, and go. And it looks like we got a code there, so we'll save that one. Now I'll move on 
to the right rear tire. That will be number three. Again, we'll press set and then press go to save that. And we'll press set again to save that code. And one more. Uh, we're going to skip that because I don't have a dually and go over to the other side. Uh, to the outside tire, just because I programmed the outside tire on the right side, we'll program the outside tire on the left side. Uh, we'll set and go to read the code. And then we'll press set again and save that. So now I've got all four of these sensors programmed and I put them back in the case in the order that they were programmed. Now we'll scroll through to the trailer tires and we'll start there with the front right trailer tire and repeat the process. So I'm going to go ahead and program these in and then we'll go to the install. Uh, when I heard that double beep and programming the cap sensors I thought maybe that was the error beep but I just want to go ahead and show you what it sounds like when you get the error. So we'll uh, go ahead and press go here again. And that quick beep, that's the error beep. Um, compared to, let me go ahead and put this flow through center over here. Compared to that long beep with the code showing to let you know that you've got it in there. Now that I just completed programming the last sensor, I'm going to go ahead and press the back button and that'll take you back into the programming menu. And through here, uh, we'll get back to the high pressure set. This is where you would go in and set your high pressure. The next one is where you would set your low pressure warning. Uh, the next one is your high temperature warning. And then you can select between bar and PSI, or degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius. And then back to learn ID. So if you hit back again, it'll take us back to the home screen. And you can see we're getting a low pressure warning because the tire sensors are all reading zero. I'm just going to hit the back button and cancel out of that warning. And uh, you can see we can press the up arrow here and scroll through the tires, uh, selecting each one of them. So now I'm going to go ahead and install these four cap sensors on the truck. We'll see how they're reading and then we'll see how they compare to the truck values. We're over here at the front right tire on the truck and I'm going to go ahead and remove the factory valve stem or valve cap. and replace it with this sensor number one. So this anti-theft tool slides around the edge there and then goes over the cap like this and allows you to rotate it on. Without this tool the cap just spins Okay, there you go. Cap one is on, and as you can see, I can spin it as much as I want, and it won't come loose without using the tool. Now I'm going to go through and install the other three caps. Okay, now we're over here at the trailer, and we're going to install the flow through sensors on the trailer tires. Now, if you look in here, there's this small set screw that locks it on as an anti-theft device. Uh, what we're going to do is use the included Allen wrench and loosen up that set screw to get it far enough out that it is not in the way of the threads. Otherwise, you won't be able to screw it on. Now, I'll remove my valve cap. And again, I'm over on the right side, so this will be sensor one in the front. Um, 
Another thing to take note of is a metal valve stem. Uh, these flow through sensors, because they're larger and heavier, are only recommended to be used on metal valve stems. If you use them on rubber valve stems, especially if they're older, they may uh, cause the valve stem to actually crack and your sensor could fall off or you could just develop a leak because that rubber valve stem isn't strong enough to hold the weight of the flow through sensor. So that one's on and we're going to snug it up. If you were to lose this little wrench or one of these screws, there are some extras included with the set. So don't lose too many, but if you do, they've got you covered. Okay, that one's on there nice and snug. And the advantage of this sensor is that you can fill your tire or let air out of your tire without removing the sensor. It has a regular cap just like any other tire stem. Okay, with that one on, let's move on to the next one. One thing I'd like to point out that I noticed during the installation of one of the sensors is that there's a tapped hole on both sides of the sensor allowing you to put the locking screw either on the left side or the right side. That's useful because I couldn't get to the screw with the wrench. The rim was in the way on one of the sensors and being able to move it to the other side allowed me to still tighten down the screw so that the sensor wouldn't fall off or couldn't easily be stolen. We're sitting inside the truck now and I've got the tire pressure display up on my truck's dash. You can see I'm reading 59 PSI on the front right 56 PSI on the front left, 56 on the rear left, and 61 on the rear right tire. Now, let's go ahead and power up the TST monitor and see what we're reading on those sensors. While we're waiting for the readings to come up, it's a good time to mention some of the other features of this monitor. This monitor does allow you to disconnect the trailer, so if you don't want to display the trailer tire pressure for some reason and only want the truck, if you left the campground, you can go ahead and disconnect the trailer from the monitor. It also has some additional warnings for tire conditions like a blowout or a sudden loss of pressure. So in addition to just a high pressure and low pressure alarm or a high temperature alarm, It'll also give you some indications. There we go. We've got uh, some sensors picked up now. I'm going to go ahead and clear the alarm. And uh, we're actually reading the trailer tire pressure. And the trailer is quite a distance away. Uh, it looks like they're not all reading. But if I turn the camera over here, you may be able to see that my camper is way over there behind my barn. Uh, looks like we're having a hard time getting it in focus. There we go. Uh, so the, the camper is uh, a good 50 feet away from the truck, if not more, and it is still picking up some of those sensors. So let's come back here and see what we've got for the truck itself. So the front right center, uh, we still haven't got a reading on. The front left center, we still don't have a reading on. The rear right, uh, again, no reading. And the rear left, we're reading 57 PSI. And if we compare that here, we had 56 from the truck's internal sensors. So I'd say that's a pretty good reading there. Uh, anything within one PSI, I wouldn't complain about. Okay, we now have a reading on all the tires. It's been about four more minutes, so I'd say the total time to get all the sensors registered to the monitor was about six or seven minutes. Uh, it doesn't seem too bad. I've heard uh, of some systems that take much longer, so I'm pretty happy with uh, six or seven minutes because once all the sensors are registered, there shouldn't be any problems with uh, losing the sensors. Um, like I said before, I don't even have the repeater hooked up and with the trailer over 50 feet away, I'm picking up all four sensors on the trailer. Now, let's go back and compare these to the values on the truck. I'm just going to keep the monitor 
or the camera pointed on the monitor for now, and I'll give you the pressures off the truck's display as we go through them. So we'll start here. Uh, I'm reading 59 on the truck and only 55 on the monitor. The next one, I'm reading 55 on the monitor and 56 on the truck. Uh, this one here, I'm reading 61 on the truck and 59 on the monitor. And the last one is 56 on the monitor and 56 on the truck's display. So the biggest variation we have is on this first sensor, and that's 4 PSI. Again, 4 PSI is a little more than the 1 that I had mentioned earlier, but I still don't think 4 PSI would be enough for me to worry about. Uh, if you have a blowout or if you have a leak, it's going to register that change or that sudden drop in pressure and give you the warning. Before we wrap up this installation, we're going to take a look at a couple more things. And the first is setting the pressure limit. From the factory, the high pressure is set at 175 PSI, and the low pressure limit is set at 100, and the high temperature limit is set at 158 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to leave the temperature alone, but go ahead and press and hold the set button to get into the settings and reset the pressure limits. We're going to start by setting the low pressure, so we can drop that down below 100. So we'll press the plus button and then the set button. Now the first axle is flashing along with the pressure. So we can go ahead and adjust that. And for the truck, I'm going to set my low limit at 50 PSI. Now this is lower than what the truck tires are rated for. But when I'm not pulling a trailer, I run my truck tires a little lower just to help smooth the ride out a little bit. That one ton suspension can get a little rough. Now we'll go back to the rear axle and set that to the same 50 PSI. And now we'll press the go button again, scroll through these other truck axles to the trailer axles. Now for the trailer, all the tires are set as one group. And we're going to set this to 15% below the rated pressure so those tire, the, my camper tires are rated to be at 80 PSI, so we're going to drop that down to 68 PSI. I overshot it a little bit. Okay, and with those all set, we're just going to press the set button. And now we'll go press the minus button and go back and set the high pressure limits. So for the front axle here, I'm going to set them to 25% over the maximum rating. So with an 80 PSI rating, that will be 100 PSI for my high limit. And we'll go back to the rear axle and set that the same way. Again, for the trailer, the trailer tires are also rated for 80 PSI, so 25% above that will still be 100. And we'll go ahead and set that, and now we'll exit out of the setting menu. Now. You can see all our errors have gone away. We're just going to scroll through the tires. One last thing I'll take a look at is disconnecting the truck and the trailer. But if we want to disconnect the trailer, we'll press and hold the go button and the minus button. And you can see the trailer tires are no longer highlighted. This means the trailer is disconnected and if you go drive the truck around without the trailer on there, you won't get any warnings. Now if we press and hold the go and the minus button again, we can reconnect that trailer. Now in the case of a motorhome and a tow vehicle, you may want to disconnect the front and still use the monitor to monitor your tow vehicle tires while you're driving around in there. So if you wanted to disconnect a motorhome from the front, you could also press and hold the go and the plus button and disconnect the front tires. 
Now we're only going to see the pressures on the rear vehicle. And again, same way, we'll press and hold go and plus, and all the tires are reconnected. Well, that wraps up the installation and setup of the TST tire monitoring system. Again, I'd like to give a thank you to TST for sending that system out for me to demo and to review. Uh, overall, I was happy with the process. The system was easy to install. The sensors went on nice. They had a nice feel. They seemed durable. The monitor felt nice as well and was easy to set up and program the alarm points. I've got a couple of camping trips coming up in the next few weeks, so once I get some miles on the road with the system, I'll have another follow-up video to give you some impressions of how it worked in the real world. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to see another video, go ahead and click or tap the screen right here to watch another video from Weekend RV Adventures. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy your next adventure.